I'm here at MetalWorks.com with Jay Chetwin, the uh, promoter and organizer of the hard, uh, Maritime Metal and Hard Rock Festival. I was trying to make sure I get that right. Did I get it right? You got it right, man. Right on. Um, now, I remember when you first told me about the festival. I remember it was a day in the winter when I was stuck in your driveway because I came to bring you a ticket at, at an event that I put together. And, uh, you, you, you know, you told me at that point, you know, like that you were planning on something like this. When did you have the first idea for, hey, I want to put together a metal festival? Because you were doing a lot of smaller shows at that point. When was the idea to actually try to do this? I guess in 2007, when I first relocated back to Nova Scotia, I had the, uh, the long-term forecasted vision of a festival. I just kind of wanted to test the waters of the local scene and if there was any viability in it. And uh, we gave it a good whirl, man. And it was, you know, there were some really good shows at first at the, the Cobrook Lions Hall, uh, a couple other spots, some really good shows with really passionate turnouts. And, uh, you know, it just got to the point where I found it a little too distracting to have so many things on the go. And, uh, you know, I just decided to try to put all my eggs in one basket and con conduce it into one weekend where people could get a full dose of many, many bands and focus on East Coast talent and, you know, have it so that the bands could kind of have an event where they can all be together, not just two or three bands and, uh, you know, in a, playing in a hall. I'd rather, would, you want to give them a chance to have the, the big full sound set up and, you know, give the perception that this is a big event. It's, it's, uh, I'm realistic, I'm modest, I know what to expect and and I have modest expectations of it, right? So uh, it's just about being realistic. Um, now, I mean, you live in Ontario now, so uh, how difficult is it to try to organize this from so far away? I know you got some good people helping you out down here. I've got great volunteers down here helping me out. It's extremely difficult, though, because uh, with having to travel back four or five times a year to come do administrative stuff, meet with sponsors, meet with security, meet with bands, meet with press, um, it's a lot of extra money that I have to put on the, the financial plank that I'm walking. And uh, I also have to leave my family during those times, which is really rough. And I also have to uh, leave my, my small business that I have out there, which means not only am I spending a lot of money to be on a, a working vacation, but I'm losing money from not working. Yeah, that's all reasonable. Uh, now, the the first year when, when you um, had announced this, uh, you, you said that you had like over 100 submissions to, to try to get in or, or around there? Over 300 submissions. Was it? So how many did you have this year? Um, about 180 because a lot had submitted. Unfortunately, a lot of the bands that had submitted in the first year and didn't get selected or were late with submissions just kind of nicks the idea of even bothering for the second year and, and unfortunately that's non-progressive to the scene right but it's a festival you can't have a hundred bands at the festival it's sort of a you know it, it, it things has, have to go as they go right maybe it'll turn into a four-day festival and there'll be 80 bands here over the weekend but uh it, it's the way it is it's you have to kind of uh you know i, I do have a rule i'll never have three of three years of the same bands within that year just to, and the bands all appreciate that to eliminate the stagnancy and redundancy right so yeah man and uh like this year still over 180 bands but the weird thing about the difference between last year's submissions and this year's submissions were brazilian bands and norwegian bands and all these bands because the word of the heavy metal community travels like you know so fluidly and uh, unlike any other music scene that i know existing on the planet I know for, for uh, you know, just the, the, we do a lot of shows in Halifax, and, and it's very rare that we ever put on a show with a poor turnout in, in Halifax because the scene there is just so supportive of, of local bands. And, I mean, a lot of people from Halifax are coming here, people from New Brunswick and, and beyond are, 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 are showing up here because they know they're going to hear a lot of great music and have fun camping. And, and uh, it's, it's really the perfect situation for, for everybody, you know. It's great for mingling with the bands, networking with each other. Bands from New, New Brunswick that have never met these bands from Nova Scotia, now they're putting, putting shows together. I'm seeing bands that played last year who had never met each other, now they're doing little mini tours in the Maritimes together. That's what it's all about for me. A big focus that I try to do and, and encourage without seeming like a, a preacher is for the bands to all support each other. And even if you're not, not hugely digging the music of another band, what happens is if all the bands go out to support each other's gigs, then the venues go, holy shit, there were 300 people here. Like, guys, do you know any other bands that might have this draw? Well, yeah, because we all come out to each other's shows. And, and I know from my 
from my efforts and my experience on the West Coast that when a, a band played, three or four hundred of their fans came out. And then the next show, the next band played, and it just it made the bars see viability in spending the money to uh, have bands come. And, and we, we both know, Bill, that when it comes to finding venues that are just opening their doors and encouraging metal shows to happen there, they're far and few between. Yeah, and unfortunately, Halifax just uh, lost one. Hopefully, they will uh, be able to relocate. But um, now, now, last year's uh, festival was supposed to be two days. Got got knocked down to to uh, to uh, one day, and, and and then had a smaller turnout. This year's much bigger. So, how? What is your expect, uh, the, like expectations for next year? Okay, well, I'm following, uh, when I went to music school back many, many years ago, I'm following a formula that I, I learned about and worked on, and that's if you can maintain quality and increase the provisions and keep people happy and work on the constructive criticism to make people happy and fix their problems, and you can double your attendance each year, then it's going to turn into big things, right? Um, last year's attendance at peak time on Saturday night was smaller than this year's attendance, the first band on Friday afternoon. That says something. Uh, Amnesia Rock Fest started out with uh, 150 people in a field, on a soccer field in a little flatbed stage. And now it's massive. Ninth year, 200,000 people. Yeah. Yeah. So so hopefully this will become something like that. Um, now, are there any plans? Now, now I know you, you were trying to get like a bigger name last year. Um, is that something that, that you'll continue to try to do within reason, of course, because, I mean, there are some bands that just want too much money. Uh, I, <laughs> yeah, and it's not even really about, about the money. It's about the common sense behind it. I could bring in a, a big band and take that risk and hope that I sell it back in ticket sales, but then all of a sudden it's not a grassroots event, 50 bucks for the whole weekend anymore. It's $119. You're buying $7 plastic cups of lemonade. You're buying $9 beer. You're buying $12 fish and chips, and you're being told where you can go and what cage you have to stand next to and be, what parameters you have to stick within, and it, it loses its grassroots approach, right? So, All right, so my final question, and you actually kind of answered you know, this in a sense. Um, where do you hope this festival will be in five years or ten years? As long as it grows every year and, and people are happy and the support keeps coming out, it's a tough, tough go. Like, my family hates me right now because... Uh, <laughs> You know, where our, our fridge isn't overly full because uh, our fridge is kind of empty and the stage is full of gear right now is how it goes, right? So if people just come out and support, people start to lose a little bit of the, uh, you know, if it's not benefiting me, there's no benefit to me. And, and the mentality has to be let's make it a benefit for everybody and all come together into one community that we should be. And in Europe, that's how it happens, right? Like you go to a festival in Europe, they started out, I think somebody was telling me the other day, Vakken started out with 120 or 130 people at their first year. You know, like, that's Vakken. Amnesia Rockfest. Um, Heavy Montreal always started out kind of big because they always had the corporate funding behind them. But I maintain a non-corporate sponsorship, which really puts a huge extra burden on it. But it allows me to maintain creative control. And if the event fails after a few years, it's all on my shoulders. And it's not people going, hey, man, we helped you and you screwed up. Right, and if it succeeds, I can go. You know what? We did it. The people that helped me, and and my efforts, and my sacrifices and struggles, and and you know, not having the the provisions for my family that I should really be giving them because I'm giving it to the community right now. If if I ever make a cent from this, it'll be a miracle. But if I ever start covering my bills, it'll be a dream come true. Awesome. Well, I know that I'm having a great time, and a lot of other people that I'm talking to are having a blast. And uh, people are talking about looking forward to next year already. So, I mean, uh, it is growing. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, you're definitely on to something great here. And, and, and I know a lot, a lot of people would say, hey, Bill, you know, like organize some sort of outdoor festival. And, uh, you know, like that, that there's a lot to it, <laughs> you know, and you know that better than I do because I haven't even tried to organize something like this. So I got to hand it to you. It's a great time. You got a great uh, list of bands and uh, it's great atmosphere. So I just uh, want to thank you for putting this on. And, um, look forward to being here next year and hopefully even playing you know so that would be amazing thank you very much bill and i want to say if i've seen seemed a bit timid and uh slightly shy or fearful during this interview it's it's because i i am really fearful of uh jim Leahy coming up he's got this plan to come up and he's going to shut the shit show down as he says and turn it into a shit cane and you can hear it in my voice i'm uh i'm kind of stressed out about it right so uh i'm going to deal with Leahy when he gets here and uh 
if he needs a couple of uh, steel toe metal studded boots in his ass and that's what he's going to get and Randy Bobandy can pull him out for him later sounds good all right metalworks jay chatwin maritime metal and hard rock festival thank you